Welcome back to your favorite channel. It's your boy Pelican Bay K9 is giving it to you the way I always do, fair and unbiased, raw and uncut. Some brothers gonna like it, some ain't. Like I always say, really appreciate all the new subscribers, man. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, like I always tell my brothers and sisters, hit that subscribe button. It's totally free, totally free. You know, don't forget, don't forget to drop down in the comments. And like I always say, big salute and shout out to all the dog lovers from one side of the world to the other side. You're rocking with the bay today. Hope everybody having a great day. We're going to get into some of this dog talk, some of this dog news. I'm bringing you from around the world like I always do. You know, so come rock with your boy, man. Hope everybody, like I said, hope everybody having a great day. Take care of them dogs. Big salute to the brothers down and the sisters down in the chat. You know, rocking with the bay. We're going to do this like this today. You know what I'm saying? First thing I want to talk about, you know, um, I want to send a big shout out, you know, big, big shout out to my man Shady, you know, dog man that I know from this side of town, one of the original dog men from this side of town. Uh, you know, I met that brother back when I had, uh, when I was dealing with Crossroad. And the thing was, you know, I had moved in this apartment complex and I had a puppy off a toe jam at the time named Tito. And he was probably about four or five months old. This is like 99, maybe. I don't, no, this is 99. This is 99. It wasn't 2000 yet. 99. I, and uh, I had a you know, dog off toe jam. He was probably about a few months. And he didn't start eating through my walls. I had him in the house, in the apartment. Man, he didn't start eating through. The, I had him in the um, little storage. You know how you have a little storage unit in your apartments? Had him in there. He uh, ate a little hole in the wall, man. So he was getting to the point where I had to bring him back into the city limits and um bring him to the yard but make a long story short i was walking you know walking him out there in the apartment complex and i looked out there and i seen a you know black brother walking a, a yellow color dog i said dang that look like the kind of dog it's like i got and i ain't knew the dude so uh um, you know being he had a dog i walked up spoke to him and we started getting in a conversation about the dog and come to find out it was the same stuff that i was running it was like sambo's aunt or something like that, you know, coming down off of, uh, I want to say he was off of Toe Jam or Fatty. The, the female was Queen Pen. The female that he had was named Queen Pen. I want to say she was off Fatty or Toe Jam, one or the other. But, um, you know, and he was dealing with Crossroad just as I was. Um, the thing was, we didn't know each other up until that moment. Didn't even know we were dealing with the same dude with the dogs. But he was from one city and I was from another city, you know, but... He moved to my city, and that's where I met him at when he moved, you know, to Seaway. But, yeah, the brother had the dog, Queen Pen. And like I said, he was a true dog man from back in the days. Um, You know, uh, one of them dog brothers that's, uh, uh, how can I put it, serious about their dogs. You know, um, when I when I first met him, you know, I was grabbing some smoke or something, and just the conversation the brother was giving me off rip about the dogs let me know I was talking to the right kind of brother and let me know he knew what he was talking about. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I just want to send a big salute and big shout out to Shady. You know what I'm saying? Hold your head. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. We're going to be bulldogging, you know, when you touch down. You know, PBK9s. Giving it to my brothers and my sisters out there and big salute to, to um, W Kennel and, uh, all, all for one, I want to say. You know, I might, I may be wrong, and, and if I'm wrong, I got to go back and correct it. You know, but big salute to W Kennel out there. Um, you know, now let's get on to this real quick because we're going to get into a lot of that news, um, dog talk, and different opinions about when it comes to certain things. Um, you know, for my brothers that are starting YouTube channels, no matter what the uh, gen genre is, understand this. And this is something I heard from more than one YouTuber, you know, bigger YouTuber than what my platform is doing. Uh, the Biden administration did something to the point where they want to uh, shut down the Facebook. Like the brothers that's getting the paper off the Facebook and the YouTube. It's like they're trying to shut it down and make your work harder. You know, it's like. They want to push you out so you have to go run and do this or so you have to go run and do that or so you have to go run and do this. You know, they're trying to stop the money because they know you have kids that's seven and eight years old. 
9 to 10 years old that come up making YouTube channels <laughs> that's 9 to 10 years old that's making more than grown folk, you know, and you done struggled whole, your whole life. And this is, this is a way and an outlet for a lot of people to make money. Not how you tell me to make it, but how I want to make it. You know what I'm saying? What, uh, or what, um, you know, what my, my crowd like, you know, what my community like, my people like, my subscribers like, you know, um, that's all that matters in that particular situation. So this word is the Biden administration and Kamala Harris is affecting, you know, the Facebook and the YouTube um, views and, and structure wise, you know. And for the brothers that don't know, they, they're doing a lot of shadow banning on YouTube, making it harder for you, you know, making it making it harder for the brothers that's trying to come up and making it hard for the brothers that's already monetized. Brothers who's not even monetized yet, they're making it harder for you. And the brothers who already getting paper, they're making it, you know, harder for you as well. So I just had to put that out there. So if you notice certain things or, if you know, with your channel, it's not you and not your head playing games with you. It's the way this YouTube system and algorithm and all that stuff is working, man. You know, it's the way it's working. But like I said, man, shout out to all the dog lovers out there. You know, um, from one side of the world to the other side. Now, I'm going to get into some of this Bronx news real quick. It's really Manhattan news. And then we're going to get into some dog talk, and then we get into the rest of the news as the video go on. Get into the Bronx news real quick. It's rather astonishing. <laughs> you know, it's not, this didn't happen in Bronx, you know. Salute to all my New York dog lovers out there, man. Salute to all my New York dog lovers. This didn't happen in the Bronx, but this happened by a Bronx native in Manhattan. Here we have a woman arrested for biting her dog. Yes, you heard me, biting her dog. She just said that's what she do, you know. She says that's what she do. Now, my thing is, one article I read said it was a man. The other article I read, all the articles I read says it's a woman. Now, as I show you the picture in the background, I don't know what it is. It ain't my thing to worry about what it is. I'm just here to give the news. They said it was a woman, bit the dog in the face, and, the, and, and, and they say that's what she do. You know, I'm going to let you listen to the article. She say, that's what she do. She bite her dog. Or he bite his dog. Shim bite, shim bite shim dog. Whatever whatever they want to call themselves, but they bite their dog. And then the excuse they gave the police for why their dog was bleeding, say the dog had em, eczema. You know, say the dog had eczema. <laughs> but hey, man, you heard it first. We're going live to Manhattan. PBK9 Dog Talk and News. Dog TV. You know, giving it to you. Let's get into it. We're learning that a local dog owner apparently bit her own dog. Interesting. Okay, we're told 24-year-old Jillian Teixeira was seen biting the head of her pit bull on East 86th Street in Manhattan. When police arrived, they say the dog was bleeding and that the Bronx woman admitted to biting the dog, telling officers that her pit bull has eczema, which is why she was bleeding. Now, Jillian is being charged at this time with animal cruelty. Yes, sir, man. It's a crazy world out there today, man. Crazy world out there today. It's something in the water. Like I told brothers, you got brothers naked everywhere you go, attacking people. Everywhere you go, you see somebody getting attacked by a naked man. And then you got these folk out here biting dogs and told the police that's what she do. It's like, like that's something I do. That's what I do. You know, that's what I do, man. I bite dogs. I bite my dog. You know? I mean, hey. It is what it is. Just got to give it to you. Fair and cut, raw and unbiased. And I think I'm going to go ahead and give the rest of this news so we can get into the dog talk and we can just roll it out with that dog talk, you know, and don't stop when we get on to it. You know what I'm saying? But I want to take y'all brothers back to Colorado because you remember, and y'all sisters back to Colorado because you remember a week ago when I told you a Colorado pet owner was found dead and his litter of puppies was missing. Well, I have an update for y'all brothers today. I have an update for you, 
and it's a rather sad update well sad up a sad situation period when the brother was found dead you know but we got an update on it you know what i'm saying and we gonna watch this video i was about to give y'all a little info on it but i'm gonna let it, i'm gonna let the video tell you what it is you know um got one arrest you know got one arrest and I think I got more than one video on this particular incident, but y'all listen to it and we're going to talk about it when they done. On the Idaho Springs dog breeder murder case, your reporter in the foothills, Alan Janae, tells us two of the 10 stolen puppies have been found. One was given to a local bartender by Paul Peavy before his death. Another puppy was found in Greeley after a vet scanned a microchip and called the sheriff's office. Sergio Ferrer was arrested for Peavy's murder last month. Eight puppies are still missing and we'll continue to update you on this story as we learn more. Ferrer went from a potential customer of Peavy's to killing him. He told law enforcement he reached out to Peavy earlier this year after his daughter expressed interest in a Doberman puppy. Court documents say Ferrer paid a $1,000 down payment for a puppy and was set to pay the remaining $3,000 in installments. Deputies say when Ferrer went to pay his final installment, he found Peavy's RV empty and he stole several BB guns and a 9mm handgun. It made sense to arrest him. The Clear Creek County Sheriff's Office says after obtaining a search warrant for Ferrer's home, deputies found the guns, jewelry, a cell phone, and metal detectors believed to belong to Peavy. Documents say Ferrer initially denied taking any puppies, but later confessed to taking more than three. Deputies say Ferrer claimed Peavy was working in the cartel and brought him in. He changed his story and told law enforcement when he went to make his final payment, Peavy pulled a gun on him over, quote, 18 keys of missing drugs. Documents say Ferrer claims Peavy shot at him and he shot back to defend himself. Deputies say Ferrer took Peavy's body and dragged it away from the property where someone would find him. A search party did find Peavy's body five days after people last heard from him. According to the Clear Creek County Sheriff's Office, two of the 10 Doberman puppies have been accounted for. Ferrer is now facing first degree murder and robbery. In the newsroom, Janelle Finch, Nine News. Now that's crazy. They found one puppy because the man must be sold one, and then the other puppy had a tracker in it. You know, that's a good thing that them puppies had uh, uh, what do you call them? Um, microchips, because you know, whenever they go to the vet, even though you can't actually track the dog down, whenever they go to the vet, the vet gonna scan them, or whenever they go to a shelter anywhere, they gonna scan them for that microchip, and they find it, and it's gonna lead back to that brother that was passed away. You know, but did you hear this the, the man said the brother was involved with the cartel and he had 18 kilos missing you know pulled a gun on him you know what i'm saying pulled a gun on him and and he had to defend himself you know now the thing is you know we all know that's a bold-faced lie you know um some only an idiot would make up you know, okay, now he says this brother is is in the cartel, which could be true, which could be true. He could be in the cartel, you know. But the thing is, he's missing 18 keys, right? He's in the cartel and he's missing 18 kilos. For anybody who know the worth of 18 kilos is not just a pull my gun out situation. You know, somebody about to do some coughing up when we talking about 18 keys missing. You know, it's not about being no, oh, did you take my bricks? Did you take my kilos? Were you around my house? Were you searching around? Did you? It's not that situation when you're talking about that much money missing. You know, that's just an excuse an idiot would make up for why he did what he did. You know, and like I say, the brother could be involved with the cartel or this or that. You know, you never know. You never know. You can't look at a book and judge a book by its cover. 18 kilos, you know. You got to ask yourself this, right? You got an old fella there. If the old fella wanted to confront a young fella because he th think he took his 18 kilograms, don't you think he would have somebody else there with him? An old man? And if he pulled the gun, he's not going to be playing with it to the point where you got a chance to pull yours out. You know, when it comes to defending yourself from a 
person who has the gun out, if a man is missing 18 keys and he know he's about to step you about it, you, you're not going to be able to react to that. He's going to already have his gun out. You know, if he know he's going to pull it out or he knows he, he's already going to have it out, if he knows he's going to confront you, he's probably got people with him, three or four people with him. When he confronts you, he's an older man. Knowing he's confronting a younger, younger brother who can probably outhandle him physically. So I'm going to make sure we're going to get these 18 keys back. You know, that old man wasn't selling them 18 keys himself. He could have sold them himself, but he wasn't moving them on the street. Whoever he got moving them on the street, they missing some money. Yo, somebody stole my bricks, man. I think I know who got them. Now, everybody who he was fronting these, this work to, who was coming to buy this work, now there's a drought. It's a shortage where they from. You know, so they don't mind coming to look out for the old man. He to connect. They don't mind coming to stand there with him while he <laughs> correct somebody because he think they got his 18 bricks. So me, me seeing you saying, oh, the old man try to uh, check me. He part of the cartel. He tried to check me about some bricks by himself. Sounds far fetched to me. You know, we talking about millionaire status when it comes to dope. Why would I move like a 50 flipper? You know, why would I move petty? No matter what kind of move I'm making. He could have been on a low out there in, in the desert in the middle of nowhere doing his thing. You know, could have been out there doing his thing. But if I think this young dude, if I think one of them 18-year-olds got my packages, not just a little bit of work, but all a lot of work, you know, and I know when I'm about to check him, I'm going to make sure I got the upper hand at all times. This is not no, oh, we talking, we just talking, we just talking, and I'm, I decided to pull my gun out, and you decided to pull one out, and we go wild, wild west having a shoot-off. That's not that situation. You know? But, hey, I just got to give you the news, my brothers. Give you the news. Like I said, you know, they made an arrest on the on the situation, and most likely something else might come from that. You know, and, and the thing the thing it is, the brother put a down payment on the dog. You put a down payment on the dog, the man probably got your information somewhere at the house. You don't think the police eventually, when they run out of leads, you don't think they'll eventually start checking the dog list if they find a list of people who put payments or anything down. Do you got your dog? Why you, you know, you put a down payment on it. Do you know anything? Do you know anything that happened? Any kind of enemy this, this man would have had? You know, ignorance is as ignorance does. You put a down payment on a dog. I put a down payment on an American pit bull, tell you. You know, hey, Legion Fury, you know, Legion Fury. I put a down payment on American Pitbull Terry. You know what I'm saying? Um, with with you, with you, you know, I send you five, and you know you want uh, say three thousand three thousand dollars for the dog. You know, you send me five, you owe me twenty five hundred. Now, when you get here, you don't think if you're gonna do anything shiesty, you would do that. Before I get any of your information, before you send me any money, you know, before I can link anything back to you, before the paper trail leads back to you, you know, if you're going to plan on doing anything, shiesty. So it's just a crazy situation, man. You know, some brothers may say it, it went down the way he said it went down. And you never know. You never know at any day, 100%. You never, never know. You know, you never know, man. And we're going to touch up on some things, too. Talk about these dogs in Hollywood, these pit bulls, man, and how these dogs are being used in different ways. You know, um, big salute to the brother Vanguard K9 out there as well. Big salute to all the YouTube channels doing the right things with these dogs and trying to promote positivity when it comes to these American pit bull tails. You know, it's, it's hard doing the right thing when it comes to these dogs, my brother. And I'm going to say this for all my brothers that 
got their feet dirty back in the days, got in them squares, did the dog fighting thing and all that. You know, it's just like a it's just like a uh, alcohol being an alcoholic, my brothers. You know, it's the adrenaline that, that rush that you know, it's just something a high that you couldn't get from nowhere else besides letting one go in the box. Now, when you quit living that life, you know, it's hard to say, oh, I'm going to stop this, I'm going to stop that, I'm going to stop this. But I want to send a salute to them brothers that got pit bulls in the yard and they rehabilitated themselves. They said they're not going to do the same things they used to do back in the 90s. You know, uh, those are the brothers I'm saluting right now. Salute to all the brothers that know that's not the way to live right now. But I'm saying salute to the brothers that are strong enough to keep these dogs on the chain, to keep these dogs in their house, in their presence, and don't do anything illegal with them, knowing how much they love to get in that square the way they like to get in that square back in the days. You know, it takes real discipline, you know, and real change to do that. You know what I'm saying? It real. So I want to salute them brothers all day long, man. All day long. Now, I got one more piece of news I want to give brothers. It's coming from Buchanan County, you know, animal abuse. And we're going to get into that. And then we're going to drop down into this dog talk, my brothers. I think that's all of the news I got for y'all today. You know, um, we're going to get into that dog talk. We got a lot of talk to talk about. And some things I want to get y'all brothers and sisters opinions out there. And like I say, big salute to all the new subscribers. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm learning this YouTube stuff as I'm going, my brothers and sisters. You know, um, I, I be doing a lot of different things and a lot of the stuff I do by myself. So, you know, bear with me on certain things. I, I found my spot where, you know, my new subscribers, I, I see your names and stuff like that. So I'll be keeping up with you. You know, sending you shots out and salutes to you. You know, and appreciation that y'all rocking with the bay, man. Because at the end of the day, a lot of brothers don't like some of the stuff I do. But you got to understand, uh, you know, you ain't going to like a lot of things that's good for you in life. You don't like medicine. It don't taste good, but it's, you know, given to you to help you. A lot of things are not good to you, but good for you, you know. Like, and, that's, and that's what my channel is, man. You you might, you know, catch a little attitude about this or getting your feelings because I post this up or post that up. But it's all for the benefit of the breed. And, and, and the breed can't live by itself. You know, the breed can't live by itself. These dogs can't walk themselves down the street, can't feed themselves. So if I'm doing something for the benefit of the breed, it got to be for the benefit of the person as well because the breed can exist without the person that's... <laughs> Feeding it, watering it, walking it, um, um, training it, doing all that other stuff. You know, this channel is trying to make sure you got a, 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 a blank canvas to work with, my brothers. The blank canvas that you want, you know, not something that's scribbled all up and all other kind of stuff. And you got to try to uh, make something out of that. You know, I'm trying to give you the blank canvas to work with. In order to do that, we got to do the right thing with this breed. That's all it is to it, man. The right things with this breed. Um, and like I said, the news is the news. Any real dog man going to respect the news because at the end of the day, any real dog man know that I get the news from the news. You know, get the news from the news. Some brothers start off ignorant and old. Oh, why are you posting? Why are you posting? Listen, you know, what your your first argument need to go back to where I got my video from. And once these brothers start understanding that and, and realizing, you know, you got your dog news, you got your regular news, you got your local news, your worldwide news, whatever kind of news, you know, and when you make it, you make it. Every, no make no difference what kind of news you is. CNN, Fox, no matter what news, uh, you know, uh, station you are, you get your news from somewhere. You know, if it's if it's Fox News reporting that uh, um, Donald Trump had an assassination attempt, they got their news from somewhere. Somebody reported it. Then they got it. Then they got it. And then they got it. You know? 
Fox might start off with it, but then your local news channel get it. And then the next news channel get it. And that's how the news go, man. A lot of brothers finally starting to realize it, you know? Finally starting to realize it. News anchors and news people that give the news, they only got a job. They go to work to give the news. It's not because, oh, we want to report about this, this person getting shot or these people getting robbed. They come to do a job. Whatever they put on the table is whatever they got to report. Whatever them CNN satellites put on my table is whatever I got to report, you know. And I'm only doing, for the most part, dog-related stuff. You know, time to time, I, you know, give you other type of news, you know. But for the most part, dog-related stuff when it comes to the news. But like I said, a lot of brothers realizing, you know, uh, it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. Uh, some brothers, they, they get kind of off their rocker, a little loony, and they want me to, um, like, really get up here and say the craziest of things. You know, I got up here and I, I talk about dogs that from the past, you know, brothers li literally say these dogs aren't from the past. They're from modern day times and live chats. You know, it's like a lot of brothers are just too slow and a lot of brothers aren't meant for this social media stuff. And, and you get up and you say all kind of stuff and say all kind of things and don't know how one single word can put you in the line of fire or put a brother that you dealing with or talking about in a line of fire you know it just is what it is man it just is what it is but y'all check this out buchanan county pbk nines dog talking news fair and unbiased y'all hit that like button up out there we got some dog talk to get into you know y'all hit that like button up and let's get into it local news a neglected dog has died despite efforts to save it after being found near a Buchanan County trailer. News Press Now's Jenna Wilson is in the studio for more on this developing story. Yeah, that's right. Well, animal cruelty is all too common, and that includes here locally. Another case of animal abuse has taken the life of a dog, and charges are now pending for one couple in Buchanan County. In early August, a lethargic dog was found nearby Lake Contrary. It was a great Pyrenees, and according to vet notes from Angel's Vet Express, 50 pounds underweight. Despite attempts to save the dog's life, it passed due to its declining health. I had an ear infection and was oozing maggots from the ear infection. This is totally inexcusable for any dog. Anybody could see this. The dog was adopted by a local couple who failed to properly care for it. Vet reports state the dog arrived lethargic with his collar grown into his fur. Maggots were discovered in his ears, and after five days of emergency care, the intense infections took over. He has had too much going against him. If we'd have had the dog a month ago, whatever, he would still be happy. Dog could have lived 15 years. The case was sent to the Buchanan County Sheriff's Office, who has been working alongside the prosecuting attorney to determine charges. And the Buchanan County Sheriff's Department has completed this investigation on their end, and we will continue to bring you updates on News Press Now when more information is available from the prosecuting attorney. Reporting from the newsroom for News Press Now, I'm Jenna Wilson. Now, do we really, really know the worth of these dogs? You know, do we really know the worth of these dogs? Like, more than ever today, these dogs are all throughout Hollywood. They've been through Hollywood way back to the Little Rascals. You know, more than ever they're used in Hollywood today, today's time. Now, the thing about, and what we're about to talk about is why are a lot of breeds using the pit bull as a cutting agent and then they're trying to discredit the real american pit bull tell you you know you want to out and banish the real american pit bull tell you and you're making all these little different little things off of the american pit bull tell you and i'm talking about from the shepherd dogs to the bully dogs to the Every, it's, it's so many different breeds of dogs that uses American Pit Bull Terrier and then they discredit the original. Oh, there's bad dogs, these bad dogs, these bad dogs. We know, we, we all know, most of the time it's the leash, the person the, 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 on the other side of the leash, you know? And it's just like so many breeds using American pit bull tell you, if it ain't but 25% of American pit bull tell you, but then you discredit these dogs, you know? Um, it's like, we don't know the worth of these dogs. Uh, 
have we really not really, uh, how can I put it? Have we not really sat this dog down and really went through this dog from top to bottom to see what his true characteristics and traits are. Now, we know this dog is dog aggressive. It was made to bait, bait animals, bait bulls, bait bears. It was made to fight. We know that. And that's the, 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 the tag that came with the dog when the dog came to America. You know? But have, did we ever put this dog down at the round table? Because, see, we, we, I feel like we need to have a, a recall. We need to bring the pit bull back to the round table, you know, and do a total breakdown of these dogs because these dogs are way more smarter than the brother or sister give them credit for. They do a whole lot more than the average person give them credit for only because of the old stories, the old history, uh, the forklords, fork lords, the myths, you know, all that stuff play a part in it when it comes to the pit bull being a, just a macho dog, a, a dog, a bully dog, a dog just to, for fighting. You know, bring these dogs back to the table because these dogs offer way more than what people understand. You know, these dogs do scent work just like your German Shepherds, just like your Malawis, just like your other dogs. They can do it. They can do protection work. They can do all this other stuff the same exact way. The same way you make bad breeders in these other dogs, you can make bad breeders in the pit bulls the same way and get undesirable traits the same way. But these dogs possess characteristics that we don't really talk about as a public. We don't talk about it. All we talk about is the brute of the dog, you know? But the dog itself carries much, much more to bring to the table. It's like you being in a relationship and you won't let that flower blossom. You only want this flower for one thing, you know? Oh, just for the look, you know, just for the look to sit on your table. But this is a medicine flower. This flower got a smell that just automatically relaxes you. You know, it, it, it does so many different things outside of what you want it for. You know, we got to bring that thing back to the table and say, it's time to really do a fact check with these dogs, you know? Are they great with people? Can they do this? Can they do that? Not just one man with one dog and one line of dogs. You know, brothers got to take the whole line back to the table, period. You know, brothers might not have to go do these little band dog crosses in order to make them a what they feel like a, the, the perfect protection dog. You know what I'm saying? You get that same thing out of the American pit bull tell you if you come at it with a different point of view. If you come at this dog, when you come at it, you're not thinking, oh, it's a fighting dog. You know, yeah, he's dog aggressive, but to, the Malawi is dog aggressive too. You know, the Malawi is just as dog aggressive as American Pitbull Terry is. You know what I'm saying? They will go start a fight. I'm not talking about will fight if they get jumped on. The Malawi will go start fights. Just as dog aggressive. And when I say start fights, I ain't talking about no curb biting. I'm talking about locking and holding on to it. But we get them dogs and we we, we, we bring them Malawis to the round table and we, we get everything. We suck the blood out of them. We get anything we can get out of them. The training, we get the, the, the aggression, the, the protection, the, the loyalty. We get everything we can get out of it. But when we get a pit bull, we only want to get one thing out of it. You know, the dog aggression. And then we want to say these dogs are dumb or these dogs don't know how to do this or don't know how to do that. That's why I say, man, when I'm working them pit bulls from puppies, man, listen here, man, them dogs are super smart. When I, I work them from grown dogs, ace, ace, super smart dog. You know, I showed you right there on the video, my brothers and sisters took a full grown dog and worked with them. American pit bull tell you, you know. I mean, some brothers only want, they settle for less, you know? You settle for less. So when you hear the old stories, a lot of y'all brothers don't even know these stories. You, you don't talk to dog man who will give you just sit up under the tree dog talk, you know? When you hear the dog man from California or the dog man from Tennessee or New York or Florida, 
he giving you his old school dog stories and he telling you his dogs were especially okay i'm gonna give you an example say mount man hummer okay great dog uh say jeep okay we know jeep was a champion okay mayday mayday was a grand champion one of the most phenomenal dogs to touch this saw when it comes to american pit bull terriers now just say victor telling you his stories now victor telling you mayday had his favorite cat he would never mess with his cats. He would never mess with the cats and go play with them, scratch up on them, and all this type of stuff. You know, um, just different things that these dogs, like, these dogs, brothers wouldn't believe it because you think these dogs only want to do one thing. You got dogs that probably hang with chickens, won't mess with them, but he'll go chase a dog or he'll go do what he's supposed to do when it comes to a dog. You know, dogs aren't for one thing. You know, you come at that dog with a one-track mind is where you get, you know, your 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 one-stop shop. You know what I'm saying? We're not trying to run a one-stop shop with this breed. We're trying to let you see that this breed, one day we'll have the American Pit Bull Terrier competing. The real American Pit Bull Terrier. I'm talking about Mayday, Jeep Dogs, Red Boy Jocko, Big John Dogs, uh, Macho Buck Dogs, Puma Dogs. Um, Jack Sparrow dogs, you have uh, um, um, Thug, Thor dogs competing in the Westminster program with the AKC uh, registry. You know, real American pit bull tays. You know, you, you, you letting, how can, you, you don't see that the AKC pretty much banished one of the breeds that this country started with? The pit bull was America's dog. For many, many years. But yet, it don't find its way in the, in the AKC system. And I'm not talking about that new stuff they bring in and registering it up in Staffordshire. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about to the point where AKC acknowledges the truthfulness in these dogs. You know? The pedigrees in these dogs. And what these dogs are built for. Working. You know, working. Now, one thing I will say, being that the American Pitbull Terrier has been ousted, kind of ousted from the AKC, kind of have saved it in a way. You know, and I'm about to tell you exactly why. When it comes to the AKC and the standards and the show standards with these dogs, you, you, you start ruining dogs. They ruined the German Shepherd. They ruined the Rockwaller. They ruined the Dormerman Pitcher. They ruined all different kind of breeds of dogs because they want them to fit to these AKC standards. And the AKC standards, a lot of these dogs are unhealthy dogs. That slope back to the German Shepherd went like that when the German Shepherd first started. You know, them show standards now. Them show standards. And all that is is hip dysplasia and all that type of stuff that you're going to be dealing with later on down the line. So being at the pit bull, it wasn't dealing with the AKC like that. It really may have saved the structure of the dog to where you still can get it in working form. A lot of dogs you can't get in working form. A brother think you got a German Shepherd and think he's going to be a working dog just because he's a shepherd and don't know how many shepherds out untouched. And, my, and they body hit my body and they soft body. When I call them soft body, I call them brittle dogs. You know, it seems like if I elbow you hard enough, you ain't gonna, you can't hurt nothing. If I elbow you hard enough, it's going to make your bow down and curl out. Soft body dogs. I can feel it when I bump into you. You know, you brittle. You, you can't jump no fences. And you're going to, you jump a fence, you liable to break your hips and all other kind of stuff. And all that comes from that AKC show stuff. You know, and the, and the thing about ADBA, what makes ADBA different from and the brothers who deal with the pit bull shows different from the AKC shows is ADBA still want your dog in American pit bull uh, standards. Still got the same characteristics. They don't want your dog to, to be able to uh, uh, just walk up on a dog and he just all friendly and all that. And he's just the biggest baby and all that. Not the dog that's winning best in show. That dog need to be firing off. They want that dog to be firing off just like he would if he was if he was just imported in 1918. You know, that's how they want the dog to be acting. 
They want the dog with the structure that the dog's supposed to have. You know, not too long, not too this, not too that, but perfect. The way it's supposed to have. Not too big of a head, not too big of this, or they want the dog perfect. You know, and all judges have their own personal preferences of what they consider perfect. But the thing AKC is doing different than ADBA or ADBA, my, my fault, is doing different than AKC is keeping the standards of their breed to keeping their breed to where it's still working quality dogs. Yes, sir, man. These dogs have so many different characteristics and qualities we never try to bring out. But hold up, my brothers and sisters. Hold up. You know, let me let me show you, you know, what what little old um little Fletcher, Miss Fletcher doing out there in, you know, in the Midwest. Oh. <laughs> Come here, puppy, puppy. You scared of the water, are you, little swimmer? Come here. You just got a bath, girl. <laughs> Is it that the brothers who created and started these dogs, you know, missed something? You know? Something went past them because they were so focused on the aggression in the dog, they missed everything else. If they would see how aggressive them Belgian Malinois was when it come to dogs, they probably would have been fighting them many years ago. You know, is it that the brothers who, who, who gave us the foundation of these dogs missed something? They didn't tell us everything these dogs were capable of. And they let a, a false narrative be dragged along for many, 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 many years with the breed starting way back in the days, but then it became socially known in the 80s. You know, and I gave y'all the article when we showed the Sports Illustrated edition when they did the article on the American Pitbull I'll tell you. You know, making them look like vicious dogs and that's all. They just brute dogs, just attack dogs, just bite people and stuff like that. And them dogs are far from that, you know. You got to work with what's on the other side of the chain. You got to educate the dog brothers and sisters in order to make this breed better. You know what I'm saying? Educate the brothers. You know, educate the sisters. And, and when we say educate, it's not saying that nobody is dumb. For one, it's two people that got to be educated. You got the dog brothers and sisters that deal with these dogs. They need to be educated on how it's going down modern day time. Things we need to do with these dogs in order to keep the breed the way we needed to keep it or need to keep it. We got to educate the ones who don't know about the pit bulls at all. The ones who looking from the outside of the glass, they looking in and saying, oh, these dogs are just ferocious dogs. These dogs are bad. These dogs are human biters. These dogs are this. These dogs are that. You know, all on negative um, sides of the spectrum. This video is sponsored by Built for War K9. Be sure to add Built for War K9 on your Instagram for your next ultimate pet pal. You know, we got to educate them that these dogs are far from what you think they are. You know, when I take them pit bulls and mellow yellow, when I go out there and I do my training and this and that, see, with a Malawi, when I take them out there, it looks good and they like to see it, but it's expected. You know, it's expected. When I take that pit bull out there, they're not expecting that. They're expecting me just to walk by. First, I can walk by them. And let them let Melly Yellow pull me. Make them think she's a pulling dog. Cause she gonna pull on the leash. Let her pull me. And then I go out there in the field when they full playing football and they full got all the people out there at the field. I'm on the other field. Cause that's all that's the way it always is. You know? That's the way I do a lot of my promotion when it comes to dog training. You know, you got one field full with um brothers playing this level of tackle. You got one field full with families and, and, and little um, children out there playing a next level of tackle, you know? So I'm on the other field with nobody on it doing my dog training. I'm going to have a pit bull out there, something not expected, doing this, doing that, doing this. They're expecting the pit bull to be uh, ferocious and all that crazy stuff when I got the pit bull out there showing them the exact opposite. You know, the exact opposite. We got to educate the ones who don't know about this breed who may be 
curious and may want the breed, but they heard bad things about it. You know, so when they when they automatically they come in with negativity in their heart when they step to the breed or whenever um, somebody asks them about it, well, do they want to buy this? They automatically feeling negative about it because the the, the myths, the folklore, all of the the, the the lies, you know, the the the, the misclassification of dogs. Now that's another thing we gotta talk about. Let's make America game again, my brothers and sisters. You know, and they ain't gonna know what we're talking about. We think we're talking about the other stuff. We're talking about making America game again. The only way you can make America game again, you know, is to get the pit bull to where it's the pit bull. I shouldn't have to worry about the pit bull being 18 different dogs, you know. And when somebody call in and say, oh, a pit bull attack, it's not even a pit bull, it's a blue big big bully dog or either some other kind of dog that's not even a pit bull we got to educate the public to what these dogs really are what kind of dogs when you see this kind of dog this is what this is when you see that that is what that is so if you make a call in on that let them folk know the bully attack my dog the bully attack my dog the pocket pit the band dog attack my dog or the band dog attack my child or there's a, a loose so-and-so kind of dog running down the street, but the only way they can know this is be educated by it. When they see a German Shepherd, they don't call it a pit bull because they was educated to know what a German Shepherd looked like. You know, you got to educate them to what a real pit bull looked like in these days, man. Don't just talk trash to them. You know what I'm saying? Let them see what it is. You know, they look like this. They look like that. They look like my dog. They look like Supreme Excellence dog. They look like Legion Fury's dog. They look like Big Logic joints. They look like these brothers' dogs. You know, we got to let them see and let them uh, see the positive sides of this of this thing, man, of this aspects, you know. Um, and that's, that's all it is to it, man. Getting America game again. Getting the breed back to one solitary breed, the American pit bull terrier. I shouldn't have to say American every time I want to talk about my breed of dog. You know, this is what it start with. The pit bull was the pit bull. Let it get back to the pit bull. You know what I'm saying? All the other dogs, they great dogs. They phenomenal dogs. I'm a dog lover. I love all breeds of dogs. I may talk trash about bullies and pockets and this and that sometimes. I love them. I'm a dog lover. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, I like shit Tzus, poodles, whatever. I'm a dog lover. You know? But let's take the breed back to what it was. The pit bull terrier. One dog. One breed, you know, not all this other stuff. But only way we can do that is by educating the public, the folk who's not in the dogs. Don't let them just have a bad presumption or a bad uh, opinion about this without correcting it. Show them what, what, what you're talking about. See, this is when it comes down to walking it like you're talking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, we got to show these folk what these dogs do, not just tell them. You know what I'm saying? Not just me, not just uh, one other brother on YouTube or the next brother on the YouTube channel. We got to show these brothers as a masses and these sisters as a masses what these dogs are capable of. You know? You got to show everybody. You know, they going to sit there and watch. Because to them, all we know how to do and all our dogs know how to do is fight. So we willing to sit there and show them something our dog will do different. They're going to watch. You can best believe it. They're going to watch. Everybody know, uh, you know, when you start cutting these dogs up, and that's why I say I train and I, and I, and I had to put emphasis on this. I train metal yellow. And I did it. And I said this when I did it because Brothers take band dogs and no discredit to none of my brothers who do a lot of training when it comes to different aspects of protection and different things. But they put these cuts in these dogs because they feel like the American pit bull tell you can't do it alone. You know, you need that little other breed in the dog to bring something else to it. But we can show them different. You know, we can show them different. We Because we haven't showed them this. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 different lines of American pit bull terriers. Different lines. And all got different characteristics. We haven't showed them that. When they say pit bull, we don't just call a pit bull a pit bull. We say, what kind of pit bull is it? 
a pit bull? That ain't a pit bull. What kind of? And then once we find out it's a real pit bull, we want to know what bloodline it is. You know? And then when we find out what bloodline it is, we want to know who it's coming off of. You know what I'm saying? So let's show them what these dogs are really capable of. You know? And like I said before, I got to give a shout out and a salute to the brothers that made changes over the past two, three years since we start uh, advocating and, and, and talking about making a change with these dogs. Seeing that your dogs is getting taken. You know, seeing that you're, you, you're wiping whole yards out just because a brother getting caught with an eight ball or crack. You know? That's what's real in this dog game today. You know, in order to save these dogs for all the old schoolers to come out with y'all books, to do, do, do all these dog shows, the ADBAs, the digital dog shows, um, Brother South Bottom, ADBPR, the, to do anything. You got to educate the public what's going on today. My man just got caught with a 50 flip and got his whole yard took it. That's what's going on today. You know? 100 dogs. 100 dogs. Brother got 50 dogs. All he got caught with was two grams of cocaine. Whole yard got took it. This channel is to let brothers know, weigh your options. My brother, is this worth this? You're only selling, you're only what I call a corner on it, my brother. You're in the way. You know, let it go. You know, but at the end of the day, it's brothers like you to keep the next man up, and he keep the next man up, and he keep the next man up. So it's like a, a, a whole tree thing. So do what you do. I can't stop you. Do what you do. That ain't what I'm here for. I'm just here to tell you, when it come to these dogs, man, you know, we got to educate the public. We got to educate the dog brothers that these dogs bring more to the table, man. You got brothers making million dollar movies, you know, because they added 25% of pit bull in their dog. Then you can look at these dogs and see clearly that they got pit bull cuts in them. And Bel Jamalawa, one of the most famous dogs in the world, you know, whether you got papers or not, with them Belgian Malawas. <laughs> they known to have pit bull in them. You know, they known to have pit bull in them. I don't care what your AKC papers say, what your B, your, your, your BM, uh, BNR numbers is, or none of that type of stuff. You know, they using certain dogs to get certain traits in their dogs, but then you shun the originals. You're not going to shun us when you come over here Come over here getting my genetics to make, oh, I'm going to use human beings, for example, you know, and this, nobody's getting dead like this, but I'm just going to use us, for example, you know, okay, yeah, you you want to come get my sperm to make, you know, um, these babies because you need some traits that I got, you know, you need my traits, but then you want to shun me, you know, now, just imagine if, my white brothers, you know, we're going to use this example. And like I said, big salute. You know, I'm rocking with my white, white, white brothers, Mexicans, everybody. But we got to talk examples right now. Now, imagine, you know, you, you know my white brothers, y'all, sunburn faster than us. Now, imagine if it was y'all using the black people to make babies, to put melanin in y'all skin so y'all can last in the sun better. You know, wouldn't get sunburned as easier because you got melanin in your skin. You don't want me for nothing else. You're just using me to get something in your skin so you have a, a different kind of skin to your offspring. But then you treat me like shit. You want this in your offspring, but you treat me like shit over here. I'm nothing. I'm a bum. I'm a robber. I'm bottom of the barrel. I'm, I'm scum of the earth, you know. But you taking my traits my genes and using them for other stuff that's what's going on with the pit bulls my brothers you know big salute to my white brothers out there for letting me say that example and my black brothers out there man you know but that's what's going on with the pit bulls man they using these dogs 10 percent of the pit bull 15 percent of the pit bull because these dogs are structurally sound when it comes to breeding when it comes to genetics okay we know we get our 
our inbreeding. We have all our problems like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the pit bull as a whole is a dog that can that can really add add spice to dogs. You got dogs who can't even cross with dogs. Okay, say a poodle, right? Only certain kind of dogs can mix with a poodle. But I guarantee you, you breed a pit bull with a poodle, it's going to give you an eye looking dog. You know, you'll get an eye looking dog. Pretty much anything you breed the pit bull to, it's going to look, you know, pretty decent. You're going to have your muscular structure, you know, your good face tone. You know, uh, it just, and then it's just sad how this country, you know, wages war against the dog who gives them so much. And like I said, man, we got to make changes. We got to make changes all the way around the board. You got to show the good. And like we always say, the good going to outweigh the bad, man. We got to show these brothers who making 10000 on a dog fight. That show them how, how brothers making 10000 on going to these shows. It just got to be shown. We got to put it out there. You know, we know gambling ain't legal in certain ways, but you can't stop me from making a bet with a brother because, saying who going to win this dog show. There's nothing illegal about that. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing illegal about that, my brothers. You know, um, we got to let brothers see that it's money in the other side. You know, you thought the grass was green over here. You know, let's give them a reason to, to lie to us, my brothers. You know, let's give the brothers who want to do the other thing, let's give them a reason to lie to us and say, oh, it's about the money. Because when we start making billions and thousands and millions and millions of dollars over here in this circuit doing all this other stuff across the world, when it comes to the legitimate, the positive stuff with these dogs across the world, don't tell us it's about money no more. Now we know it's just about the ego, just about knowing, you know, certain things about your dog. And like I said, man, we were and this ain't something we started. This is a pastime, an American pastime that was handed down to the American folk. You know? That dog stuff, the dog fighting and all that type of stuff, it's illegal, it's wrong, it's it's horrible. You know, nobody should be doing it, but it was handed down to us, you know, by no particular person, but Americans. You started importing these dogs, you know, there was no major laws to this stuff up until 20 years ago, up until 2007 when Michael Vick got caught up when it became a felon, felony, you know, no major laws because you're not doing nothing that serious back then, you know, compared to, you know, how it's going now. Now, you got to be real with yourself. When these brothers start factoring in, you got two brothers that got unalive, you know, at the dog show. Uh, we still, it's a, it's a unsolved case, you know, the dude peanut and them down there. I think it's a Mississippi. When you got stuff like that happening, when you got more guns getting busted at the dog show than on your, your local police force, when you got all that type of stuff, you got to expect for the laws to change with these dogs and make them more stiffer and make them where, you know, it's involved with all the kind of stuff like racketeering and all the kind of stuff, man. You know, you got to expect all that stuff. This ain't the days where it was just the dogs. The brothers get caught up, but they had a pocket full of money and just the dogs. Maybe they had some weed, you know, just the dogs, maybe some 30, a couple 38s, maybe a nine or two, you know, just the dogs. And back then, it, you know, it wasn't no felony possession of firearm up until after Ronald Reagan got, you know, um, attempted assass assassination on. And then they came out with the Brady Bill with the felony possession of the firearm and all that type of stuff. So we talking in the 80s, the brothers for the 80s, having a firearm wouldn't have been nothing at the show. You know? So we got the, the wave coming down from all that. And everybody's saying, oh, this looks for fun and they like to see this and you get caught up in the mix and you get caught up in that adrenaline rush. Once you get that rush in you, once you go through it one time, it's like crack. It's like uh, alcohol. You want to see it again. You want to do it again, especially if you win it, you know. And, and you know what I'm saying? Only a weak-hearted person will go out there and, and, and just 
put them on something back when you was a little kid and just it just destroyed you to where you couldn't you didn't want to go back out there you know for the most part even if you lost you still went back when you was a child but we got to educate the public man that's what it's all about you know uh enjoying ed educating the public not educating the public because you get in trouble and you're forced to do it you know it's a difference it's a big difference like i said before my brothers you know this is something i enjoy doing giving dog talk talking about dogs talking about old school stuff giving brothers dog news you know what i'm saying when i say dog news i mean around the board i don't enjoy telling about a brother who got jammed up you know it's just what i do i give the dog news but i enjoy doing my job you know all the way around the board you know what I'm saying? And like I say, I want y'all to check that video out. I'm dropping with anime training, you know, in a few minutes. I'm going to drop that as well. So I want you to check that out because what I'm doing, I'm letting you see I haven't worked anime in over two years when it comes to training. You know, training lasts a lifetime, but uh, conditioning lasts for a week. You know what I'm saying? Training lasts for a lifetime. So what I want y'all to see, I'm going to take her out. I'm going to do... All my commands, I'm going to freshen her up. Y'all going to see how rusty she, she is. But like I said, I haven't trained her in over two years. Um, it don't matter the breed. Training lasts a lifetime. You, you treat these dogs like something, like they want to be treated, like dogs, you know, like the pets, like your family, like they are, you know, and you'll get something back out of it. You get something back out of it, man. That's just the way things work. You know, that's just the way things work. You know, and I want to say this, you know, um, to the brothers, we got to, you know, educate the public. You know, red nose is not a bloodline. To my brothers who may not know, red nose is not a bloodline. Red nose is a color. The color of a dog nose. And, and most of the time, the dog that have them color noses, their skin be certain color. You don't see a red nose black dog. You might see a black dog with no pigment in his nose, but that's not a red nose, you know, and I've often heard certain people say, oh, we got a black red nose. We got a black red nose, you know, and those will be some pretty things to see some black dogs with real red noses, not a lack of pigment, which would, would be a pink nose. That'd be a pink nose. I'm talking about red nose, you know, but for the most part, I'm just letting brothers who don't know sisters who don't know that when you say red nose, um, what bloodline you got? Red nose. You know, that automatically lets me know you're not real familiar with certain things. You know, you got an American pit bull terrier, but you're not real familiar with certain things because red nose is only a color. You know, only a color of a nose. Exactly what it says. Red nose, red nose. As far as it go. You can't find out what line of dog this is. You can't tell me this is a Eli dog, Red Boy Jocko, um, Bolio, whatever. You can't tell me none of, none of that stuff about the dog nose color by looking at that dog nose color. Like you can look at dog features and tell me some stuff about all that. You know, but as far as his um, just calling out a line because he's a red nose, you can't do it. Now, you know, since we're talking about uh, how these great dogs can they produce. Uh, you know, they're great, but will they produce themselves? Let's do a little comparison, my brothers and sisters out there. Big salute to you. Hit that like button up, man. And, and remember where you get it from, PBK9s, where we like to educate the public about the breed. You know, at the end of the day, check this out, right? Let's go to basketball, my brothers. All right? We got, we, gonna, we talking about com com comparing humans to dogs and we're talking about comparing basketball players to dog situations you'll see exactly what i'm talking about okay we got michael jordan michael jordan will be considered an ace in the dog game michael jordan will be considered an ace in the dog game my brothers hey yo mr 216 hey y'all boys out there look what lucky y'all boys city boy kennels marcel man hey let's hear alberto and rest of y'all boys out there in bella uk you, I know y'all think Michael Jordan is an ace, but the thing about it, and he know I ain't lying, Michael Jordan is a perfect example in the dog game of what an ace is that can't produce, can't produce nothing. 
You know, can't produce nothing. When we got Michael Jordan, couldn't produce nothing. Aces, use a great dog, but your production level is not there at all. Not even a little bit. Not even there at all. You know? Now, now let's let's on the other hand, let's go to the next man. We got Dale Curry. Well, he was, you know, pretty good player. He's an average player. Pretty good. A little better than average, you know. But he was a producer. He produced aces. You know, he produced the ace. I produced the Michael Jordan. I produced the LeBron James. You know, he produced. You got your, your, your average dogs that are throw out phenomenal dogs. But they're just average dogs. And it's just like that. You know, just like that, my brothers. Now, you got Dale Curry producing Steph Curry and Michael Jordan making Marcus Jordan. <laughs> Michael would have ran through Dale, <laughs> but Steph, <laughs> Steph probably would have gave old Marcus a heart attack. You know, now let's keep this thing going. All right, we got Bobo making Bobo, I think, makes Manute Bow the type of dog that that produce himself. Bobo, if you're familiar with Bobo in the NBA, he makes Manuk Bo the type of dog that can produce himself. Manuk Bo produced himself, at least, you know, himself. Because Manuk Bo was okay, but he wasn't, he wasn't, you know, where, that, where Bobo can't reach his success, you know. But Manuk Bo did his thing. But, you know, Bobo possibly could be better than him, you know, and he least produced himself in this particular situation. Now, let's go to another one. My brothers, you know, one y'all brothers know out there, y'all sisters know. What, what the name is, old oh, Mr. Joe Bryant. Mr. Joe Bryant. Let me make that correct, you know, so you can understand it. That Bryant, you know. Some people might say he was average. Some people might say Mr. Bryant was below average. He was in the NBA, but he was below average player. You know, that's everybody's own opinion. But look what he produced. He produced Kobe Bryant. You, you saying a below average player that produced an ace. You know, that produced an ace. So that's when you got your, your, your underachiever dogs. But he, he possessed that ability to produce great dogs. That's why I always tell you, man, don't give up on your dog for, uh, for just anything. You know what I'm saying? Don't give up on your dog for just anything. And when you know what you got, know your dog pedigree, you know. Because listen, okay, this ever got grand champion yellow himself, right? I got Grand Champion Yellow himself. I take Grand Champion Yellow out, and he done produce Mayday. He done produce all these other dogs. You know, I got him, and I take him out, and he lose. Now, am I to put Grand Champion Yellow down? Now, thing is, if I don't know Grand Champion Yellow offspring, if I don't know his background, if I don't know nothing about him, and I'm just getting that dog and just not doing my research, yeah, I'm going to put him down. Because I don't know his worth. You know, he made Mayday. He made all these other dogs. Deadlift, Bozak. He made all these other dogs. But because he lost, I'm going to put him down? Your pride just shook you out of thousands and thousands, maybe millions of dollars. You know, knowing what you got. And that's, that's how important knowing what you got is. Like, that's a question that you ask yourself about every single dog that you know was a producer from the past. You know, that, 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 that went out there in that square. Jeep, you know, 
if Crenshaw would have put Jeep down because he lost his fourth show. You know, or maybe if he lost the next show after he went out, if he lost the next one, he put him down. He don't get none of the dogs that he got off of him. For, you know, from that point, he don't get no tab. He don't get none of these other Jeep dogs, you know, because he put them down. Or we put, he put Bully Son down. He put Eli down, you know, after they took an L. If he put Bully Son down when he curled out in the box, would we have all the dogs that we got now? So you got to know what you got. That's what it's all about. If you know the dog that you got now are coming from a, produ a producing line of dogs, you know, it's not something that, you know, uh, that you can breed, you know. A lot of stuff, like I say, it make bad moves. You might go out there and, and get outdid in that treadmill all year long. But you producing dogs that can compete and that's winning in other shows. Confirmation, treadmill, um, weight pulling. Your dog's winning. You just can't win. And then that goes back to another thing, brothers. It goes back to another thing. That female dog that we breed into, we 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 do it too much. It's too many female dogs, like I said before. We're going to keep track of these dogs. You got Cottenham Sheba. You got Green Sandy. You know, it's a few more dogs that don't get the props they supposed to get as much as these dogs get brought up that wasn't producers. We bring up Tornado and Ken Allen so much. We don't bring up, and, they, and Tornado ain't produce shit. But, it could be because he didn't breed tornado to certain things. Or he may didn't breed as much, you know. But the thing is, uh, these dogs aren't being recognized, the female dogs. You know, we talk about the big giant stuff, but what about CP? You know, what? You know, was it Sabre? You know, it just, was it Blondie? Or was it Tornado? Or was it crazy girl that's making these dogs do what they do? But I, I really, I can use that line, but at the same time I can't because that's the top and bottom same exact thing. You know, we talking about uh, when you kind of half and a half in it, you know, 50-50. You know, a lot of times the females don't get the props that they supposed to get. Don't get the props, man. Um, like I said, uh, uh, Joe Bryant produced Kobe. So even in regular sports, you got brothers who producing better than them, uh, brothers who ain't producing their quality. And this is another thing I'm going to ask brothers out there. Have we forgotten that? Because a lot of times we talk about these dogs with skin problems and different things. Have we forgotten that the bulldog in general is a breed of dog that has a lot of skin problems? You know, that's the one thing I learned when I was 14, 15. The bulldog is a dog that have a lot of skin problems. Heat spots, all different kind of little things. You know, rashes. Um, they just have skin problems more often than your average dog. You know, Sometimes we forget that, you know, and we kind of blame it on one line of dogs or this or that or this or that. But, uh, and that goes to genetics too as well. Breeding, breeding styles. Brothers who making good breedings with the dogs with good genetics. You know, maybe a lot of the brothers back in them days was breeding dogs with bad genetics just to get fighting dogs. You know, just to get fighting dogs, just to get a dog that's going to win in the box. And then you're breeding dogs with, you know, red mange or all the kind of diseases that can pop up here and there, flare up on a, uh, on a dog, you know? Yes, sir, man. Like I said, you know, these dogs, man, when, when they're going through responsible breeders, you know, when, when these pit bulls go through responsible breeders, they can be top quality service dogs, top quality therapy dogs, you know? Just as any other dog can do it. And the pit bull probably going to be a better therapy dog, uh, you know, than your Malinois and stuff like that. 
are not going to be good for therapy type stuff. You know, they're going to use more of a a, 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 a a mixed breed type dog. You know, but these, these pit bulls, certain strands of them are lovable dogs. You know, want to be just, I'm talking about a person is their best friend more than food. They want to eat, but if they see a person, they're just so happy. You know, got to edu- educate the public, man. Got to educate the public. Got to focus and try to make better breedings for me to everybody. Our main goal should be make the best breedings for these lines of dogs for to get the quality of dogs that we need. You know, we shouldn't be breeding dogs that only I can handle. And when I sell you a puppy, the dog got so many problems, you don't know how to handle it. But I know how to handle it because I know the line of dogs that are coming off of. So I know how to handle all this stuff. No, man, we supposed to be breeding quality dogs that no matter who you get this dog to, they can raise this dog up, give him the simple life, simple love, and treat him the way he want to be treated. You know, it just is what it is, man. And I, I, I got to give it the way I always have to give it, man. And I want to send a big salute to them brothers rocking with me down in the chat. Y'all hit that like button up. You know, don't forget to subscribe to your boy. Subscribe to the bay, man. Subscribe to the channel. You know, we just going to keep giving it to you the way we giving it to you. Raw and uncut. Fair and unbiased. Some brothers going to like it. Some ain't, man. You know. Y'all hit that like button up. Y'all hit that subscribe. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay legal out there. And remember, man, it's a million ways to get paid off your dog these days. You know, don't just be one, one-sided, one one-track, one-mind. How do you say it? One-track minded. Uh, only seeing one thing, you know. Don't be like that when it comes to this breed, man, because you, 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 you're making yourself, you're only denying yourself uh, great things that you can be doing with these dogs, you know. So uh, y'all stay safe, y'all stay legal. PBK nines, and I'm out. Oh. <laughs> Come here, puppy, puppy. You ain't scared of the water, are you, little swimmer? Come here. Kind of bad, girl.